Adam is in Ohio. Hey, Adam, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave, how are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I'll try to be quick for you, of course. Um, my wife and I have four children. She is a stay-at-home mom. Um, I make about thirty-two to 35000 a year. Um, together, we have about 100000 in debt. We are kind of new to the Dave Ramsey thing, so we are trying to – we got the money, the app and all that, and we're going through it. Um, most of the debt is mine. I have about 80,000 of the debt with 30,000 of it being student loans. Um, 30 of your the, 80 is student loans? Yes. Okay. What's um, the other 50? Um, I co-signed for a car when I was 18 and that's 20,000 and the car got repoed and, um, I have some stuff for school that wasn't covered by student loans, um, some medical things, and just kind of like all small things add up. I have no credit cards whatsoever. Those um, other small but, things add up to thirty thousand dollars. Well, with the uh, the car is twenty thousand of it. Yeah, I owe another. I owe a college fourteen thousand, and then and I owe um, some like two different medical bills that come up to ten thousand. And then um, another uh, five thousand is to another school. So okay. And what's your degree in? Um, I did not get to finish due to having kids. <laughs> so I want to go back, but now I want to be able to like pay for it instead of taking out more student loans. Okay. What were you studying? But, um, I was biology. I am about a year away. Like if I if I went back now, I may have to do longer just because of the time frame, but. I had uh, about a year left to get my biology degree. I got you. How old are you? I'm 27. Okay. And what's the other 20,000 that your wife had? Um, she has about, oh, she has 20,000 in student loans, also didn't get to finish her degree, and 2,000 is um, medical. Okay. All right. Okay. And your question's what? Um. We know that it's a big no-no in you, so I, I kind of feel like I know the answer. Uh, but I was debating if I should file bankruptcy due to the massive amount of my loan and then the fact that I only make thirty-two to 35000 because one of the debts that I owe are attempting garnishment, and it'll take 25% of my take-home pay, which would be a lot for my family. Yeah, who's attempting garnishment? Um, one of the universities that I owe. It's the the, 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 the 14000 okay. Yeah. All right. I'll tell you what. Uh, well, I mean, it's not a big no-no in the sense of, like, I'm mad at you or something. It's just a matter of what does it do any good, number one. And then number two, I always put bankruptcy and divorce in the same bucket. You try everything you can try to keep from doing it. Anything you can do to avoid it, we avoid it. Um, and then sometimes good people face that. Uh, I went through a bankruptcy. Right. You know, and I, I'm not proud of that, and I wouldn't recommend it. I've got a friend who went through a divorce. He's not proud of that, but he wouldn't recommend it. But uh, he yeah. survived it, and there's life the other side of it. But it's a it's a life altering occurrence, you know. And so right. we want to look at it and analyze it and say, what is anything we can do to avoid it? You got a pretty pretty big mess here for sure, no question about that. Yeah. Can you hold with me through the break and let's break it down a little bit on the other side of the commercials? Absolutely, thank you. All right, I'll be right back with you. We're talking with Adam in Ohio, $32,000 income, four kids, $122,000 in debt, 30 in student loans on him, 20 on his wife, that's 50 of the 120, 20 in a repo, 14 at a college that's coming after them with a garnishment, 10 in some medical, 5 in another school loan, and so on, 2 in another medical, a lot of stuff piling up and not much income, and uh, it's been a while, and he's been getting beat up, wondering wondering if he needs to file bankruptcy. Is that a fair summary of what you told me so far, sir? Yeah, it, it is, it's it's 100K total, though, not 120. I, uh, I, I'm not happy with the 100. I don't want to add a 20K to oh, it. Oh, I must have uh, added it wrong. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Um, well, the uh, – oh, yeah, you said 80 was yours. That's right. I did, I did yeah, screw yeah. up. Okay. Um, either way, it's uh, it's overwhelming yeah, it's right now. Yeah, it's a lot for yeah. And the garnishment coming at you is what's uh, prompting this. So here's the thing. If you file bankruptcy, you're still going to have the $50,000 in student loan debt. Yes. It survives the bankruptcy. 
So Absolutely. we're filing bankruptcy on about sixty thousand dollars, and he gets rid of the garnishment. And um, you probably there's what's called a means test uh, when you go in to file bankruptcy, and if you make too much money, uh, your income indicates you can pay your debts. Then they put you into a Chapter Thirteen, which is a payment plan, not a Chapter Seven. I think you'll pass that means test looking at this, and you probably will qualify for a Chapter Seven, which would wipe everything else off except those two student loans. So Correct. that that's what bankruptcy would do for you. And obviously, that would be a relief. The thing I right. always I, want to I, look at, and I want to make sure you're looking at and help you with, is uh, two things. When I filed bankruptcy, the attorney was a character, uh, but he did say a couple of things that were wise. One of them, he said, uh, make sure you protect your marriage because financial stress will destroy your marriage. And that, no kidding, we were about to kill each other at that moment. He, I guess he saw the black eye Sharon had given me. I don't know. But... Uh, uh, the second thing uh, he said was bankruptcy does not create an income. And what you've had is um, a long uh, career, a long period of time where you've been stuck on your career. Your career sucks and it's not getting better is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And um, bankruptcy is not going to solve that. You're still going to be sitting there with $50,000 in debt, four kids at $32,000 a year. You're still slightly above the poverty level at that point. Right. So it's not, it, it's still going to be a mess. So bankruptcy is not really, it's going to help, but it's not going to solve everything. So uh, versus, like as an example, uh, this stupid college may force you into it because you may have to do it to protect your income to feed your kids. You can't lose 25% of $32,000 to a garnishment. Yeah, uh, I would, I'd be bringing home like six fifty. I know. You can't, you can't feed your family and keep your lights on doing that. So they may force you right. into it if they do that. You may, you may mathematically not be left with any options. I hope that is not the case. Yeah. But what solves no, your overall problem, when we solve your overall problem is when we solve your career problem. You have an income right. problem. Agreed? Yeah. The sad thing is, is for my area, I'm actually doing pretty well off. Um, no, you're not. The only other jobs. No, you're not. It yeah. sucks. You're not doing good at all. I mean, you're starving to death, man. It's not that you're a bad person or you don't work hard. That's not what I'm saying. You don't make right. any money. I mean, if you live in an area where 32000 is a high income, it's time to move. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you live? Toledo, Ohio. The only other place that's going to get me more money than that right now is factories are going and finishing out my degree. Or starting a business. Toledo, Ohio has a lot of successful business people. Toledo, Ohio has, has contractors that make money. Toledo, Ohio has IT people that make money. Toledo, Ohio has people who design websites. Toledo, Ohio is not a depressed market where the average income is $32,000. That's just not true, man. You're stuck right now, and you're, you've had the crap beat out of you. So I'm being your coach at halftime when you're behind, and I'm saying you got more in you than you realize, and I'm trying to say let's go play the second half better. Uh, I think we've got – I know we've got to work on your income regardless of if you file bankruptcy or not. You've got to double your income in the next three or four years, and it's not necessarily going back to school. It's just a better choice of where you're working and what you're doing. Uh, because, but you've been doing this for like five years, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not getting any better. So that, that's what I would tell you. I, I hope you can avoid the bankruptcy because here's the thing. Let's just pretend for a second. Let's just dream for a second that you could start making 60,000 and you could pick up a side hustle and your wife picked up a side hustle and made another 10 that adds 20 to this. Now we're at 80. People do this kind of thing all the time. You hear them doing the debt-free screams. Okay, I don't know if you're cutting grass yeah. or blowing leaves. I don't know if you're making websites. I don't know if you're, she's cutting hair. I don't know what we're doing. Let's just pretend, though. Let's just pretend that was possible because it is. If you did all of that, I sudden, you guys are so used to living on nothing. For five years, you've been living on nothing. If I had $50,000 a year coming in extra above what you got coming in now, I can solve this entire thing in under two years. And you're not bankrupt. 
You see? Right. So, I um, mean, you, you could pay 100% of these bills. And you could, by the way, you, you could settle these old medical bills. You could settle the other old school debt. You probably sell this 14000 for 50 cents on the dollar or 25 cents on the dollar if you had a little cash to throw at them. If you offered them three or 4000 bucks today, they'd probably take it. But you don't have three or 4000 yeah, bucks. Getting that, yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. So, uh, and you probably don't have anything you can sell because you guys have been living hand to mouth. And again, I'm yeah. not shaming you and I'm not saying you're a bad guy at all. You don't hear that. Okay. All I'm saying is you got more potential than you've been getting out of this. And the math is not going to get easier until we get the income side of this equation up. So that's where we want to help you if we can. And if you can get some more income coming in, you can set, you can probably settle that repo for easily 20 cents on the dollar. So four grand will settle that. Uh, you can settle those medicals for probably 20 cents on the dollar. They're five years old. Probably settle these couple school loans. You're not going to settle the, the student loans themselves out like that. But all of a sudden, this 100000 starts turning into about fifty or sixty or 80000 bucks on settlements with lump sums. And now you've got some cash to throw at it because we've changed your income. But changing your income is the part of the math equation we have to have to do to make that a possibility. So that's what I'm hopeful for for you. And uh, Ken Coleman is our career guy here at Ramsey. I'm going to send you a copy of his book, The Proximity Principle. And I want you and your wife to put the kids to bed, to bed early tonight, turn off everything in the house, get a little cup of hot chocolate, and sit and dream again like you used to when you were 17 or 18 of what you want to be when you grow up that pays $70,000 a year or $170,000 a year. And what are the steps to get there? And don't tell me you got to go back and get a $100,000 loan to get a student loan to go to school to get there. You don't. So what are, what are the steps to go be what you want to be three years from now, two years from now, making much, much more money for you and your family? That's what's going to be necessary here for you. Because if you live this way for the next 20 years, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. And I don't want that for you, man. So hold on. Kelly's going to pick up. We're going to give you a copy of... Ken Coleman's book, The Proximity Principle. Kelly also throw in a book uh, called Start for him out of our library, one of them that we published a while back. Start. Because he needs to start fresh. This is a fresh start thing. Re reboot this thing. Reboot this computer. Cold restart. Uh, when my computer's not working, I don't know how to fix it because I'm horrible with computers, but I know cold restart. Just turn it completely off, turn it back on. Solves a whole lot of the problems. Takes a few minutes. But it always solves a lot of the problems. And that's true of a lot of things in life. Hey, man, you call me back if I can help more. Uh, I hope you're not forced into this bankruptcy. Let's see if we can fight our way through it by dreaming again. 